everyone, this is Karen. Hello everybody, I am Shane. Today we're looking at part one of Does Chatting on the Phone, phone Give You the Chills? And the vocabulary words are communicate. Communicate. Stacy gave her mom a new cell phone so that they can communicate with each other. Nightmare. Nightmare. Clancy's date with Kim was a complete nightmare. Oh no. <gasps> Facial. Facial. Heather's facial expression makes it appear as if she is angry, even though she isn't. Yeah, like this? Yes. <laughs> Q. Q. I took the bored look in Lucy's eyes as my cue to leave. <laughs> audience. Audience. When the show ended, the whole audience stood up and clapped. <laughs> Yay! So we're talking about talking and chatting on the phone, right? Mm, yeah. Does it give you the chills? Means are you afraid of that thing? Does it make you scared? Like ha like a phobia kind of? Right. That's mm. the, the very special vocabulary word today. Mm -hmm. What does phobia mean? Is it the same as just scared? I think it's when you're so scared of something to a point where you just can't stand it. Right, it's like extremely scared. Maybe right. you will have an anxiety attack. Mm -hmm. You can't breathe and you start to sweat. Oh, 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 I have a phobia. Oh, of what? Of worms and caterpillars. So what happens if you see a worm? Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your reaction? I will really, really panic. It. I will want to scream, scream and I will want to run away. I just can't stand the sight of caterpillars and worms. Oh my goodness. Yes. So, but you're okay talking on the phone. Oh, I'm totally fine that's, talking on the phone. That's because we grew up talking on the phone. That's there was right. no way to chat or text back then, right? That kind of reveals our age. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a little bit. Let's okay. learn a little bit more about does chatting on the phone give you the chills? Enjoy. Does chatting on the phone give you the chills? Speaking with people on the phone is pretty rare these days. Most people use email or messaging apps when they need to communicate with someone. Sometimes, though, making a call is unavoidable. This simple act can actually be a nightmare for some people. Their hearts race and their hands sweat at the very thought. If this sounds familiar to you, you might be one of the millions of people who suffer from telephobia, the fear of speaking over the phone. Hello and welcome to Live Interactive English. I'm Mike. I'm Kim. And today, Kim, we're going to be talking about something that people do all the time. Or used to. Well, that's actually really true. They don't do it all the time anymore. We're going to be talking about chatting on the phone. And that's a really good point. A lot of people use their phones to maybe chat, but here we're not talking about messaging apps and social media. We're talking about actually moving the phone from here to here and speaking into the phone to talk to people the way people used to chat or talk on the phone. Right, it's not that common these days. People prefer texting. Exactly, yeah. few people call, and so it's something that actually people today might be even nervous about doing. I know I am sometimes. Really, chatting yeah. on the phone makes people nervous and it's something they might avoid. This is definitely a very modern situation. But yes, that's what we'll be reading about. So why don't we say we go and look at our article? All right, let's take a look. Speaking with people on the phone is pretty rare these mm. days. Most people use email or messaging apps when they need to communicate with someone. We're talking Line, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp. It's endless possibility as far as messaging apps go. Absolutely. There are many, many to choose from. And all of these messaging apps and, of course, social media messages or even talking or even waving your hands, these are all different ways that people communicate. And yes, when you communicate, basically you're sharing information. You could wave, you could use your eyes, or of course we communicate more frequently by speaking, by writing, things like that. But basically anytime you're talking to someone, you're sharing information, you're interacting with that person to pass on a message, 
you are communicating in one way or another. For example, Stacy gave her mom a new cell phone so that they can communicate with each other.、Mm, was it an iPhone? <laughs> probably, but they're going to be texting with it, probably not chatting with it. All right, back to the article. Sometimes, though, we read making a call is unavoidable. Yes, you can chat with your friends, you can send a message to your mom or dad or a family member, but sometimes making a call, speaking on your phone, is unavoidable. It's something you have to do. And then we read this simple act can actually be a nightmare for some people. I know a lot of people with phone anxiety, especially、yeah. these days. We're not used to talking on the phone anymore. Right, so it's a very frightening or scary experience, kind of like a nightmare. Yeah. Now, a nightmare is a really bad dream. This can mean a dream you have when you are asleep, or it can describe a real-life situation that's very scary or makes you anxious. For example, Clancy's date with Kim was a complete nightmare.、Ooh. Clancy, how could you tell people that? What happened? Now, this isn't, of course, something he dreamed when he was sleeping. He probably took her out and spilled wine all over her new dress and forgot her name, and、mm -hmm. oh, it just went really, really badly. All right. Well, back to the article. It says their hearts race and their hands sweat at the very thought. This is that person who's afraid of speaking on the phone. Their heart is beating really quickly. Their hands are sweating. These are things that happen. When you're frightened, when you're scared. Now, if this sounds familiar to you, you might be one of the millions of people who suffer from telephobia, the fear of speaking over the phone. They have a name for it. There you go. So, if this sounds like you, if you're kind of like, yeah, that's me. That's what happens when I have to call someone on the phone. Well, don't worry. There's lots of people like you out there. Millions of people, and they have this phobia or this great fear. In this case, telephobia, the fear of speaking over the phone. Very interesting. I don't know anyone with telephobia, but of course, some people might have arachnophobia,、ah, the fear, fear of, of spiders. spiders, or something like that. This one is definitely newer than the fear of spiders. We'll, we'll take a break, and we'll be back to learn more about telephobia and how it can affect people's lives. Hello, 大家好，我是 Hanny。今天的课文标题是 Does chatting on the phone give you the chills? 讲电话让你感到害怕吗？好，那么标题里面的 chill 当名词常常用来指寒意呀、啊、寒气这样，可是它在这边是表达说突然害怕的感觉。当我们说 give somebody the chills， 或者是 give somebody chills， 就是说使某人打冷战。在这个用法当中呢， chills 它常常会用复数型表达。好，在这两天的课文里面，我们要来了解电话恐惧症，并学习一些可以克服这个电话恐惧的诀窍。好，那么课文第一段有提到说，现在大多数的人常用电子邮件或是通讯应用程式来联络。不过呢，有时候打电话还是无法避免的。对于患有电话恐惧症的人来说，打电话这么简单的动作却是个梦魇。他们一想到就会心跳加速，手心冒汗。好，我们先来看两个单词。第一个是 communicate， communicate 是动词，它表示联系、沟通。Nightmare， nightmare 就是梦魇、做噩梦、梦魇般的经历。好，那么至于。Telephobia 这个字呢，它是由 telephone 电话跟 phobia 恐惧症组合而来，变成 telephobia 就是电话恐惧症。那么 Mike 老师刚刚说到这个 arachnophobia， arachnophobia 则是指蜘蛛恐惧症。好，接下课文中。Does chatting on the phone give you the chills? Telephobia is a form of social anxiety. Although people who feel perfectly comfortable in social situations may also experience telephobia. When speaking face to face, we give off lots of facial or bodily cues that help each other follow the conversation. This is not the case over the phone, and the idea of speaking into this void makes people terrified that they will freeze up, stumble over their words, or lose control of the conversation and look foolish. So there you go. The fear of speaking on the phone—it's a real thing. It has a real name. Let's learn more about it. Telephobia is a form of social anxiety. 
Although people who feel perfectly comfortable in social situations may also experience telephobia. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, it, it might be kind of strange, but this is very real, and for people who have it, it can be. Quite serious. Social anxiety is basically just when being around with other people makes you nervous in some kind of way. Ah,、oh, I don't like going to parties and meeting new people. You know, I always get nervous. I'm afraid I'll say the wrong thing. I think lots of people have this at different times in their lives. But if your problem only happens when you speak on the phone, you definitely have telephobia. Now you might ask yourself, why? Why on the telephone? Well, as we see, when speaking face to face, we give off lots of facial or bodily cues that help each other follow the conversation. So you can tell、mm. someone's emotion, or you can kind of figure out what they're talking about by the way they're moving and speaking. On the phone, you don't have that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And by using our bodies and our faces, this is a form of communication, right? When I smile or something like that, you understand I'm feeling happy or I'm enjoying what you're saying. So here we have the adjective facial. Basically, it's a word that means of the face. Anything that's going on with your face is facial in nature. Your facial features, your nose, your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Things like that. It's not a word we use that commonly in normal conversation in our normal daily lives. But when we talk about anything that's facial, we're talking about anything that's related to the face. Here's a good example: a facial expression. In our example sentence, Heather's facial expression makes it appear as if she is angry. Even though she isn't, her facial expression is basically how she's arranging her face. When you do this, this is maybe an angry facial expression,、um, whereas when you smile, that's more of a happy facial expression. And we also had this word cue. A cue is a prompt. It's an action meant to get a response from someone else. So Heather looks angry. You take that as your cue to leave her alone. Okay, so I took the bored look in Lucy's eyes as my cue to leave. I think Lucy doesn't really want to talk to me. I'm out. Interesting. All right. Well, that was an interesting facial expression for her to kind of show you that she's not that interested. Anyways, back to our article. Now it says this is not the case over the phone, right? When you're talking to someone face to face, you get their facial expressions, you get their cues, the way they're moving their body or standing or something like that. But on the phone, you can't see them. So this is not the case over the phone. This is not. True or not the way it is over the phone, and the idea of speaking into this void makes people terrified that they will freeze up, stumble over their words, or lose control of the conversation and look foolish. Very interesting. So people need to see one another in order to feel like they're communicating well. And if you're speaking into a void, it's like your words are just going off into a dark, empty space. And you don't know what's happening, and how the other person is understanding or or taking your words, and it can make people really, really nervous. Yep, that's right. You don't know. You have nothing to go off of. You、right. can't see the other person. That's funny. I get the same thing from using text messages. I、ah. use emojis sometimes. To kind of use that like a facial cue. That's a good point. That's、um, probably how emojis became so popular. Yeah, and I guess you can hear it in someone's voice.、Mm -hmm. But if you're not used to that, you might feel you need to see their face.、So. Very true. Well, we'll talk more about this in the next part of our article. For now, let's take a break. Good cue. 电话恐惧症是社交焦虑症的其中一种。那么，即使是在社交场合感到很自在的人，也有可能会经历电话恐惧症。毕竟，我们跟别人面对面讲话的时候，我们自然而然会透过脸部啊，或者是肢体动作来放出信号，帮助彼此来理解对话。可是，透过电话就没办法靠这些信号来判断了。我们先来看两个单字 ：facial。Facial 是形容脸部的，像我们可以说 facial features 是脸部特征 ，facial expressions 表示脸部表情。下一个单词 cue，cue cue, 它是指提示、暗示或是信号。Kim 老师在解释单词时，他用到 prompt 这个字 ，p r o m p t。Prompt 这个名词呢，它常常用来表达给演员的提词提示。好，那么课文接着写到说。
，想到对着空白讲话呢，就让人害怕，他们会呆住，讲话会结巴，或者是这个对交谈失去掌控力而看起来很蠢。好，这边用到五个重点，第一个是 make 加受词加受词补语，这是表达使某人或某事物成为什么，变得怎么样。make 在这边就是表达使成为，使变得。那它的受词补语，我们可以用名词或形容词，例如 ，the nasty comment made her upset。那则恶意的评论让她不开心。第二个重点是，动词 terrified 表示使惊恐。Terrified， 它的过去分词是 terrified， 它是当形容词，可以表达感到恐惧的、害怕的。那么后面可以接 that 子句来表达害怕会怎么样，像是 Ian was terrified that he would be laid off。Ian 很害怕会被解雇。第三个重点是动词 stumble， 它是当不及物用来表达绊倒、跌跌撞撞的走。那么 stumble over one's words 是表达说话结结巴巴、支支吾吾的。例如 ，Daniel was so nervous that he stumbled over his words. Daniel 太紧张了，以至于他讲话都结结巴巴的。好，再看第四个重点是 lose control of something 是表达失去对什么的控制，像是 the driver lost control of his truck and caused a serious accident. 那位驾驶的卡车啊失控。造成了严重的车祸。第五个重点是 look， 当连缀动词是表达看起来，后面可以接形容词，也可以在 look 后面接 like 加名词。例如 ，You look upset. What's wrong? 哎，你看起来不开心哎，怎么啦？好，那我们接着回到课文中。Does chatting on the phone give you the chills? In fact, telephobia is very similar to the fear people feel before putting on a performance in front of a large audience. However, there are things that one suffering from this condition can do to ease this fear and make phone calls at least somewhat bearable. So when we talk about having cues from people,、mm -hmm. those are missing over the phone,、right. and this causes people to have a great deal of anxiety about talking on the phone. So in fact, telephobia is very similar to the fear people feel before putting on a performance in front of a large audience, also known as stage fright. And yes, performing, speaking, doing anything in front of an audience can make a lot of people nervous because an audience is a big group of people who are there to watch a show of some kind. If you're speaking in front of them, dancing, singing, acting, anything like that, you're performing. You're doing your show. You're doing your act in front of a big group of people. That group of people. Is the audience? This isn't a word we often use for sports, though. If you're there watching the the a baseball game or a basketball game, that's usually not the audience. That would be the crowd or something like that. But if it's a show, if it's a performance, if it's a speech, the people watching they are the audience. For example, when the show ended, the whole audience stood up and clapped. So there you go. All that big group of people. They stood up and clapped. It was a good show. The performer, I guess, wasn't feeling too nervous since they did put on a good show. Well, beating your fear of performing may be one thing. However, there are things that one suffering from this condition can do to ease this fear and make phone calls at least somewhat bearable. Now, what are they? We will find out in the next part. So stay tuned. 好，课文最后写到。电话恐惧症其实很类似人们在一大群观众面前表演前所感受的那到那种恐惧，也就是怯场的感觉。不过，患有这个疾病的人还是可以做一些事情来稍微缓解他们的恐惧。那我们来看单字 audience， audience 就是指观众、听众。那刚刚老师们有提到 stage fright。Stage fright, 舞台的恐惧，它其实就是指怯场的意思喽。好，以上是这个讲解，同学别走开，马上回来哦。Good afternoon. What brings you in today? 
I'm in the market for a new pair of glasses. What kind of look are you going for? Stylish or traditional? I'm looking for something unique. Can I take a look at your bolder styles? Sure. We just got these frames in, and they're incredibly popular. They're almost sold out. These are exactly what I'm looking for. See you next time.